You are watching 7 Eyewitness News with Jeff Russo, Ashley Rowe, and 7 First Alert Meteorologist Aaron Minkowski. You are not going to believe this video you're about to see, but this is all too real and frankly downright chilling. A police officer in Utah caught on body camera handcuffing and arresting a Utah nurse from the hospital after she rightfully refused to give an officer patient's blood. Now you see the officer did not have a warrant to get that blood sample so the nurse could not fulfill his request. But as this video shows, he was not willing to accept that. We get the full story from Salt Lake City. July 26th, a fiery crash caused by a car fleeing police and traveling in the wrong direction sends the driver of this semi-truck to University Hospital's burn unit. The semi-truck driver is unconscious and not suspected of doing anything wrong. Even so, Salt Lake City police show up asking for his blood. Charge nurse Alex Wubbles says the request for blood isn't allowed under the policy the hospital established with law enforcement. So I'm going to arrest her. While she's calling management, the officer becomes impatient. She's going to jail. She even prints out a copy of the hospital's protocol. The three things that allow us to do that are if you have an electronic warrant, patient consent, or patient under arrest. None of those conditions had been met. I'm just trying to do the, what I'm supposed to do. That's that's all. After that explanation, and while she's still on the phone with a supervisor. No, we're done. We're, we're done. You're under arrest. We're going. We're done. The officer makes the arrest for obstructing justice. This is my department, and this is completely unnecessary. Please, sir, you're hurting Then walk. 20 minutes later, she's released and has never been charged. I just feel betrayed. I feel um, angry. I feel a lot of things, and I feel conf I still am confused. Wubbles reminds that blood is the patient's property. I'm a healthcare worker. I'm, I'm just the, the only job I have as a nurse is to keep my patients safe. It was alarming. Um, immediately after seeing the video, they started an internal affairs investigation to look into what happened. Clearly tough to watch. Police say that officer is still on duty, but as was just mentioned, an internal affairs investigation is underway. The holiday weekend is upon us, and the governor is doing his part to keep the roads safe. A statewide DWI crackdown is now in full effect. It's part of the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. Police will also be keeping an eye out for distracted drivers. The crackdown runs through Monday. This is a sign of the times in Erie County. This new electronic sign does not only detect and display your speed, it also stores it. Deputies review the data and pinpoint the best places and times to look for speeders. The sheriff says the sign has been in use over the past few weeks and has already collected the speeds of thousands of drivers. And a hawk is now resting safely after it was rescued by a police officer in the town of Evans. The officer says he spotted the hawk in the middle of Southwestern Boulevard. You can see the hawk right there. You see him nestled in a blanket with Officer Miller. The hawk is now at the SPCA. Well, we're happy that the hawk is okay. And speaking of blankets, last night, oh. whew, Talking about, talking about nestled in a blanket. <laughs> I needed an extra one last night. Were you all well. snuggled up in They're your all uh, little feety pajamas? Not yeah. quite as tightly as that hawk was, but I did need an extra blanket last night. What about the weekend? What's going to be like? Well, it's going to be a cool start to your day again on Saturday, but uh, you know what, well, Jeff? I know how to warm you up. A little chicken wing. Ah. Festival forecast. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the Wing Fest forecast. Pleasant tomorrow, so if you start off your day cool, and then, uh, you know, maybe hit the treadmill before you go chow down on a bunch of wings. It'll be great. At noon, pleasant, 67 degrees, low 70s at 4 p.m. with a mix of sun and clouds. Then you could see a few showers arriving toward the end of day one and a few showers to start off day two. So there will be some rain at times as we head into the upcoming weekend. Draw right now, 60 degrees, winds out of the north at 6 miles per hour. You're going to find another cool evening. Overnight lows will be back in the mid 40s. We head into your Saturday, rain arriving late in the day. Sunday, we'll have the rain showers around early in the day. 
and then we should clear out as we get into the afternoon. 60 in Buffalo, 64 in Middleport, 59 in Jamestown, 57 in Olean right now. 7 Super Doppler quiet locally, but as we zoom out, you can see that wet weather just making its way into Pennsylvania right now and down across central and southern portions of Ohio. That's the remnants of Harvey, and that's pushing up toward the northeast. You can see overnight tonight, we'll find partly to mostly cloudy skies. And as we head into your Saturday, you'll see overnight lows tonight, like I mentioned, in the 40s. And then by around 1 p.m., we're at 67 degrees, the mix of sun and clouds. But it'll breeze 10 to 15 miles per hour out of the southeast. That's in Buffalo. Elsewhere, you'll find 68 degrees at 3 o'clock in Niagara Falls, 60 in Jamestown with some cloud cover, Springville, low 60s, mid 60s in Batavia. We all top out, uh, well, near 70 across the southern tier, low 70s, Buffalo northward. Here's the hour by hour forecast. Again, showing some of the showers moving from south to north across the area. After around 10 p.m., good chance for some rain here in Buffalo. Notice a steady soaking rain across the area overnight on Saturday. Early Sunday, we have that rain, then it starts to clear out. Monday, a good deal of sunshine with temperatures back near 80 degrees. Partly cloudy and chilly tonight, though. Overnight lows in the mid 40s. On Saturday, your high 73, sun in the morning. Clouds will increase with rain arriving later in the day. And here's a look at your next three days. Of course, we've got the rain there on Sunday with slow, slow clearing in the afternoon. Close to 80 degrees on Monday. A bit of a breeze, but it will be noticeably warmer. And then we take a look at Tuesday. Cold fronts coming through. That's going to kick off some showers and thunder showers early in the day and then drop our temps for Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Highs will be in the 60s. OK, thank you very much, you, Sharon. Well. Guys, I don't know if you've noticed there have been a lot of bees around the city yes. of Buffalo. Oh, yeah, have you noticed here, yeah, that? Yeah. Right. OK, well, coming up, a man's brush with bees has the record books what? buzzing. Oh, that. And all new on 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30, fall school sports like soccer, football, golf. Well, they can cost hundreds of dollars in equipment. We're going to show you ways to lower those costs and maybe save a little bit for college. Take a look at this, a new Guinness World Record certainly has people buzzing. 
after a man in Canada wore a beard of live bees. Hard to say, hard to look at. 61 minutes he did it. Juan Carlos Ortiz bore that buzzing beard, beating the previous record by more than seven minutes. That's more of a buzz cut than a close shave. Oh my goodness. Ortiz, an employee at a bee farm in Ontario, this is what drives me wild. He says he practiced that stunt only twice before trying it for real. My take is if you're gonna practice, <laughs> just do it. What? Only a few stings, believe it or not, in that uh, record setting. <laughs> oh, Beer. that is sick. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh boy. Okay, let's move on. The Force is back again. Star Wars fans in New York City flooded stores at midnight for Force Friday 2. It's a shopping event that debuts New York uh, new Star Wars merchandise. And from the looks of things, the Force is strong with the new goods. Force Friday started back in 2015, all in anticipation of The Force Awakens. This time, fans are gearing up for The Last Jedi, which hits theaters in December. Oh, cool. Look at that. Look at the lines. Look at all the people. Yeah, fired up. Anything Star Wars, right? Yeah, Look at that. that's right. Wow. Bring the bee man back. I like him. <laughs> oh, Do not bring the bee man back. Where, was where did all the bees go after he? Well, that's just it. How, yeah. What happens? So how you, then you stand bee? up, and how do you get? What do you? Wait, uh, how do you do I that? I don't know. He like either. shook them off and was okay, and I read he only got stung twice <laughs> in that long. Everybody's that's different. Straight ahead tonight, one of those new Star Wars pieces is actually now a new Lego model. Guess how much it costs? We'll have the story. And you won't believe how dirty your cell phone can get. We'll show you. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News. Don't go.
All noon tonight on 7 Eyewitness News at 530 on the rise. What you can do to save money as the price of gasoline goes up because of Hurricane Harvey. Also shouldering the burden, some safety tips for young students whose backpacks are getting heavier and heavier. And curbing the cost, some tips on how to save money when it comes to equipping your student athletes this fall. Now with 7 First Alert Weather, this is 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30. Drivers from coast to coast are bracing for higher gasoline prices now as the Labor Day weekend gets underway. That's mainly because the country's biggest fuel pipelines and refineries have now curved their operations on the Gulf Coast in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Prices at the pump nationwide have hit a high for the year now, even though there are nearly a quarter of a billion barrels of gasoline stockpiled here in the U.S. right now. The AAA says that the national average price for a gallon of regular gas jumped about seven cents a gallon over the past week, up to $2.52 a gallon now. But there are some ways to help control the money you spend when you gas up. Here's 7 Eyewitness News reporter Chris DiMaria. Thomas Benjamin of Buffalo is finding ways to make the most of the gas he uses to fill up his Chrysler. Uh, I just kind of minimalize my running, try to try to put all my errands on one day and get it all over with, and just keep it to, uh, back and forth to work. And his roadmap for saving money is coming at a critical time. AAA says the average price for regular gas is now $2.52 a gallon in the Buffalo region. That's up six cents from just yesterday, and it's almost 20 cents more than we were paying a month ago. Elizabeth Carey from AAA says the damage from Hurricane Harvey has closed key refineries in Texas, pushing supply down just as demand rises, with so many drivers hitting the road for the long holiday weekend. So how can you make the most of your gas? So there are four main trips that AAA really gives out, and the first one is the easiest one, and that's checking your tire pressure. The others? Use cruise control and check your engine and air filters. Using cruise control will minimize engine output, and having your engine checked will ensure it runs smoothly. And there are a few other ways you can save money on gas, and they start right here at the tank. Don't overfill your tank. Take out the pump after it automatically clicks to a stop. Make sure your gas cap closes entirely. A loose cap can allow fuel in your tank to evaporate. And the lighter your ride, the better. Clearing out the junk in your trunk is the easiest way to lighten your load. So, if you feel you have something back there you can probably leave at home, make sure you take it out because it'll lighten your car up and could really help your gas mileage. In Buffalo, Christy Maria, 7 Eyewitness News. We are trying to find out more information for you tonight regarding a shooting in Niagara Falls. This attack happened just before 2 o'clock this morning near the corner of 7th and Walnut Streets in the Cataract City. We are told now the victim here went to the Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center on his own. His injuries are not believed to be life-threatening. Police have not released his name, and the gunman is still on the loose tonight. President Trump is expected to soon announce his decision on whether or not to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. It's called DACA. It's an Obama administration policy which allows undocumented immigrants who were brought here to the U.S. when they were children to stay here and get work permits. Vice President Pence weighed in on the issue today. Well, President Trump has said all along that he's giving very careful consideration to that issue and that, that when he makes his decision, he'll make it, as he likes to say, with big heart. Despite the pressure to keep DACA, the White House still has not announced the decision that would affect nearly 800,000 so-called dreamers who are protected under the 2012 executive order, which is still in effect. If you're still working on back-to-school shopping, we have some important information for you tonight concerning backpack safety. There's a new study that's come out. It says more than 14,000 kids suffer from backpack-related injuries every year in this country, mostly due to the weight of those backpacks. Bags. Doctors say that students are being treated for spinal and neck injuries, which could impact them a lot later on in life. Above 20% of a child's body weight, they start making different changes to their spine. Imagine your disc is like a jelly donut, right? And it's nice and plump and stuff, but then, you know, when you add weight to it, it kind of which for a growing child can be very dangerous, especially if these bad backpack habits start at a young age. So the experts say, number one, avoid droopy backpacks. Wear them high, tight, and on both your shoulders. 
Try a backpack with wheels. It's a good option for students who have more books they have to carry. Also, make time to interchange your books. Try taking only what is necessary at the time to ease the weight. And consider e-books. They can certainly help to lighten the load. Still to come here on 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30 tonight, saving money on sporting goods. We have some tips on how to spend less money on the student athlete in your family this fall. You are in control. They call him the Iceman. He claims he can teach you how to handle life's extreme situations. We'll take a closer look at how. That all new at 6 tonight, protecting your pets from fleas, the best way to do it without harming the animal. Tonight, a warning from some local vets. On the business beat, here's what happened on Wall Street in New York today on this final day of trading for this week. The Dow up by almost 40 points today, still under 22,000. The Nasdaq gained six and a half, and the S&P 500 up by five. And don't go away. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30. Here's a story that's getting a lot of attention on our WKBW app today. A man in North Carolina tried to swim his way out of trouble by jumping into the ocean to get away from police. But the 20-year-old, Zachary Kingsbury, ended up with a shark on his tail. This is drone video the police department used to follow the drug suspect. Eventually, he was caught and arrested near a beach later that night. You can read much more about this story right now on our WKBW app. The fact that we all take our phones pretty much everywhere these days means that the average cell phone can get pretty dirty. 7 Eyewitness News health reporter Paula D'Amico has some tips tonight for keeping your phone clean. 
Research shows that cell phones are far dirtier than most people think. A study published in June found that more than 17,000 different types of germs were found on the phones of high school students. And in 2012, a study determined that cell phones have 10 times the amount of bacteria found on most toilet seats. Most of the bacteria won't have negative health consequences, but a few might. Studies have found dangerous pathogens on cell phones, including strep and MRSA and E. coli. You won't necessarily get get sick just because it's on your phone, but you do need to be careful and engage in some type of basic hygiene. Your hands are the biggest contributors to filth on your phone. The most important piece of advice is to wash your hands regularly several times a day. Experts also advise that you keep your phone out of the bathroom. You can also clean your phone periodically with a soft microfiber cloth, an antibacterial wipe, or a combination of 60% water and 40% rubbing alcohol. Stay healthy, Western New York, with today's Health Minute. I'm Paula D'Amico, 7 Eyewitness News. Still to come here on 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30 tonight. It could be close to $500. You know, when you get, like, plates and, and balls and everything. Going beyond the basics when it comes to back-to-school shopping for the student-athlete. We have some tips that could save you some money. A suspicious fire in Niagara Falls leaves one person dead as a police investigation is now underway. I'm Ed Riley with the story coming up. Here's a live look from Skywatch 7 on this Friday night as we head into the long weekend. Aaron's most accurate forecast is coming up. Don't go away. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News. Get the latest weather alerts from the 7 First Alert team of meteorologists and the latest headlines from the 7 Eyewitness Newsroom by liking us on Facebook and following us on Twitter.
You're watching 7 Eyewitness News with Keith Radford and 7 First Alert Meteorologist Aaron Minkowski. A well-known face from the world of entertainment has died. Richard Anderson died at his home in Beverly Hills, California yesterday. He is best known for his role as Oscar Goldman on the $6 million man TV show, also on the Bionic Woman. He also appeared as Joanne Woodward's boyfriend in the classic movie, The Long Hot Summer. Anderson is survived by his three daughters. He was 91 years old. Well, just when you thought you had all your back to school expenses out of the way, now comes the cost of all those school sports that begin in the fall. Our consumer reporter, John Matarese tonight, shows us the newest ways to lower those costs so you don't waste your money. Have kids playing sports this fall? Once you add the cost of cleats, helmets, pads, and other equipment, that free sport could cost you hundreds. So we found some great ways to slash those costs if you know where to look. From the football field ah! to the soccer field, ah! youth fall sports season is here. It'll be 21-25. And parents are suddenly facing all sorts of extra costs that can blow that back-to-school budget. It could be close to five. $100. You know, when you get like cleats and, and balls and everything. Robin Welch spends hundreds of dollars outfitting these kids, so she buys used and she says she saves at least half. We found her here at Played Again Sports, where manager Tony Ross showed me the hundreds of used items at half price or less. For instance, youth football girdles. Like for a brand new pair, mm -hmm. you're talking $29.99. Gently used pair, $14.99. 15 bucks, yeah. The biggest seller in used sporting goods this time of year, soccer cleats. After all, a child will go through a pair of these in a season, and they often still look new. $14.99, Under Armour. This pair here, $9.99, practically brand new. But you don't have time to shop? Well, there's a new way to find used sports equipment on local buying and selling apps, such as Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, and Let Go. We found dozens of football and hockey pads for around 10 bucks locally on Let Go. And kids' soccer cleats, excellent condition, $8 on OfferUp. And unlike Craigslist, you can check the seller's profile for you and your child's safety. Ah! Go. This way, if your young one quits the sport after a month, you're not out of fortune. Finally, even though these new trading apps that you see who you're buying from, it's still a good idea to meet the seller in a safe location, like outside a grocery store or police station. That way you stay safe and you don't waste your money. I'm John Mattery, 7 Eyewitness News. On the business beat tonight, U.S. employers added just 156,000 new jobs in the month of August, with unemployment rising now up to 4.4% nationwide. That's up from the previous month's low of 4.3%. So far, Hurricane Harvey has had pretty much no impact on the jobs report because the Labor Department collected most of its data before the storm hit. A Chinese company is now taking the world of electronic payments to a whole new level. The company is now testing what it claims to be the world's first facial recognition-based payment system. You just show your face to pay. The test run is taking place right now at a Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant in China. Long weekends here. Let's check in with our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Minkowski, and see what's up weather-wise. Well, Keith, it was a cool one today with temperatures only in the low 60s across the region. Temperatures well below normal for this time of year. Felt more like October than September 1st. Let's take a look at the maps. And you're going to look at a uh, system down to our south right there, the remnants of Harvey, and an area of high pressure over the Great Lakes, trying to keep the remnants of Harvey out of our area, but uh, at some point, Harvey's remnants are going to win out, and you're going to see some of this rain roll in. That's going to start late Saturday and continue into early Sunday, as this area of high pressure will keep us dry overnight tonight and for the first part of Saturday. But as we get into Saturday afternoon, a lot of this wet weather will be rolling through the region. 63, that's it. That's all we got up to today. Your high was 63, low today 47. You can see temperatures well below normal. Sun's going to set at 749, come up tomorrow morning at 640. And when it does come up tomorrow morning around 640, temps will be in the 40s. So another cool evening expected. Right now, 60 degrees with mostly cloudy skies, winds out of the north at 6 miles per hour. Your weather headlines calling for another cool evening across the area with overnight lows dropping back into the 40s. Rain showers will arrive late on Saturday. The rain will continue Saturday night into early Sunday and skies will start to clear out as we get into Sunday afternoon. So some of the models are suggesting 
a slow clearing on Sunday, but right now it certainly looks like it'll be wet Saturday night through Sunday morning. It is dry right now across the area. Southern Super Doppler nice and quiet zooming out. You can see the leading edge of the rain now passing through Cincinnati and starting to push off toward the north just entering into Pennsylvania. So we're going to see the showers uh, start to pop up across the southern tier around 24 hours from now, and then that rain will continue to spread from south to north across the area on Saturday. So you can see some spotty showers around 6 p.m. tomorrow. Better chance for rain here in the metro area closer to 10 o'clock, and then watch what happens overnight. We'll have the showers really start to ramp up. Expect a steady soaking rain across the area Saturday night into Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, the heavier showers off to our east. Monday, a good deal of sunshine with partly to mostly sunny skies on Monday. Temperatures back to near 80 degrees. So we do warm up again on Monday. Then a cold front comes through early on Tuesday and drops our temps for next week. As far as rain totals are concerned, like I mentioned, some of the models suggesting quite a soaker, especially early on Sunday. And one model bringing us close to an inch of rain. The Euro down to about three tenths of an inch of rain. Bottom line is expect some wet weather, especially Saturday night into Sunday morning with some slow clearing as we get into Sunday afternoon. Your forecast then for tonight, partly cloudy and chilly. Overnight lows in the mid 40s. Winds light out of the southeast at five to 10 miles per hour. Then we head into your Saturday, a high of 73 degrees, a little warmer, but still below normal. Sun in the morning, high clouds will thicken up and then some rain showers will arrive later in the day. Wind southeasterly 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at the next three days, and you can see with the holiday weekend, wet at times, especially Saturday night into early Sunday. Monday, breezy and warmer with highs near 80 degrees. Here's your seven-day outlook. Cold front comes through on Tuesday, and then we start off in the low 70s, drop in the mid-60s for Wednesday and Thursday, upper 60s on Friday. And here it is, an exclusive look at your 10-day forecast, and you're going to find temperatures next weekend back in the low to mid-70s, as uh, some of the models suggesting a little bit of a warm up as we get into mid September. So that's uh, the trend. Cooler for the middle and end of next week, and then warmer weather returns after that. Back to you, Keith. All right, good. Thanks, Aaron. Now let's see what we're working on coming up tonight for 7 Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. Among the stories we have for you, it was a major black eye for Niagara Falls. Tonight, we're looking into a new report on that black discharge at the base of the falls. What caused it, and what the water board is doing now to make sure it doesn't happen again. Also, are you worried about fleas? Well, the vet says that too much product might be harmful. We'll speak with the experts about what you have to watch out for. And still ahead at 5.30 tonight, they call him the Iceman because he breaks all kinds of endurance records. Now, he says it's a talent that anyone can learn. But first, let's take a look what's on the menu tonight for the list right here on 7 ABC. Now from the list, three s'mores made with unique ingredients. One, the Elvis s'more is fit for a king. Add peanut butter and banana and top your marshmallow with bacon. Yum. Two, for the cookie monster s'more, swap out the graham cracker for a chocolate chip cookie and add Nutella. Nom, nom, nom. And three, the Rice Krispie Treat s'more takes just chocolate and marshmallow between two Rice Krispie squares. Delectable. For more trends, deals, and life hacks, watch the list tonight at 7.
to 7,500 elements, making this the largest LEGO set ever. Yes, yeah, 7,541 pieces to be exact. How long would this take to put together? This is the updated LEGO Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon. The super detailed Star Wars model is the single largest LEGO set ever made. It is also the most expensive. This toy will set you back $800 when it flies into stores the 1st of October. Thelma and Louise movie star Gina Davis is not that optimistic, she says, about female roles in the movies these days. She says that everybody thought that the 1991 film about her and Susan Sarandon on a road trip would usher in a new era of more women leads in Hollywood. Our research shows that, uh, that the ratio of male to female characters in film has not changed since 1946. Davis says that she doesn't read too much into the success of recent films like Wonder Woman. She is still waiting to see proof that Hollywood is changing. Now, he's a Dutch adventurer. He holds 26 world records for surviving death-defying feats. And now, he claims that his ability to withstand extreme conditions can be taught to other people. Here's ABC's Elizabeth Herr. Easy goes. On a sunny summer day, a dip in the pool looks refreshing but look closer these pools are filled with ice cubes feel in control you are in control and these men and women are actually trainees testing their endurance i really am so proud of myself it's all mental it's about you just have to relax it's a method pioneered by wim hof the self-proclaimed ice man i'm able to control the body through just the power of the mind we first met Wim on ABC's 2020, seven years ago, setting numerous records, wearing just shorts and sandals, scaling the world's highest mountains, running an Arctic marathon, and immersing himself in ice for 72 minutes. For most people, these extreme conditions are dangerous, even deadly. I know my body, I know my mind. But claiming anyone can be trained to push the limits of human endurance, Wim now travels around the world hosting workshops, teaching enhanced breathing and meditation techniques, which, according to Wim, can help people push through the pain and panic of high pressure scenarios. That's us. That's our body. That's our mind. Scientists at Wayne State University are taking notice, studying the Wim Hof method and telling ABC News in a statement he found a way to trick the brain into believing it's in a stress situation. The overall effect is that one does not feel cold, is euphoric and somewhat resistant to frostbite, adding it is up to each individual to decide whether it's useful or not. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. And that's it tonight for 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30. Thanks for joining us. Don't go away. 7 Eyewitness News at 6 begins right now. All of a sudden, I got glass breaking and all kinds of commotion. Neighbors rattled by a deadly fire. Tonight, several questions remain after a body was found in the burned out home. Also, it's the sewer water saga. No report out now. It details what exactly caused that smelly mess at Niagara Falls a few weeks ago and what's being done to make sure it doesn't happen again. And building a winner. Anxious moments at one Bills drive as players in the bubble await their fate. Now with seven first alert weather, this is seven eyewitness news at six. Hopefully it can get to the bottom of this. Stunned by the death of a longtime neighbor. Good evening once again. Police in Niagara Falls call it a suspicious fire that left one man dead. Now the flames broke out on Niagara Street in the Cataract City late last night. Still many questions remain. But as 7 Eyewitness News reporter Ed Riley tells us tonight, while foul play has not been suspected here, also it hasn't been ruled out yet either. They had heavy smoke coming out of the windows, but light flame and the uh, the fire was actually put out with a, a water can. The fire was reported just before 8 p.m. Thursday evening at this home at 522 Niagara Street in Niagara Falls. When firefighters arrived, they found the interior of the house had been severely damaged and the fire had burned itself to a point where it was concentrated in a corner of a living room. It wasn't all engulfed in flames, you know, yeah, I couldn't even smell it. You see, it's smelling. Fire crews also made a grim discovery. I'm an adult male was found in uh, the living room. 
Detectives and arson investigators quickly determined that the fire had been intentionally set at three spots in the home. It's such a sad, tragic moment to see that this happened around the corner for me. The victim's name has not been released. Niagara Falls police say an autopsy did not reveal an exact cause of death, but it did rule out blunt trauma, stab wounds, and gunshot as possible factors. Police added that foul play is not suspected, but it is also not being ruled out at this time. And hopefully they can get to the bottom of this. Neighbors tell us the deceased man was older and lived with his wife. Talk to him when we see him outside and that was about it. They're very nice people. Officials would not comment on whether other people were in the home when the fire started. He's just a friendly man. It's too bad that this happened. But with many unanswered questions, people who live near the fire scene are very nervous. And this afternoon, the fire department was reassuring the neighborhood, saying it does not believe there is any cause for alarm. In Niagara Falls, Ed Riley, 7 Eyewitness News. A uh, new report is out today on what caused that massive black discharge at Niagara Falls a few weeks ago. This picture from that j day in July shows the mess near the Made of the Mist dock that only stuck around for about a day, but it left a black eye on the city for weeks. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Jeff Rusag is following the story tonight. He's live now in the newsroom. Keith, we're getting more answers about what led to that black discharge happening in the Niagara River in late July. Basically, the report saying that any fix for this solution will be very expensive. Now, the Niagara Falls Water Board says this black water was caused by two main factors, outdated technology and a miscommunication. Workers were supposed to stop the release when the water started turning black. That never happened. The board says they have developed a short-term plan to limit the amount of discharge, but they say it's unknown if this plan would completely stop a similar problem from happening in the future. Now, there are also two long-term plans. Move the outflow pipe further away from the falls. That could cost upwards of $20 million. The other is upgrade the technology at the treatment facility. That could cost anywhere from uh, 90 to 100 million dollars. Now the water board sent this report to the DEC. The DEC says they are reviewing that report and still continuing their own investigation. Jeffrey Sack, 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Jeff. Along the Gulf Coast tonight, heartbreak for thousands of people who are finally beginning to assess the damage. While in some areas, rescue operations are far from over. First responders in Houston are still going door to door to find families trapped in their homes. And now people are facing hidden dangers in the toxic floodwaters, including possible electrocution. Two volunteers are reportedly dead and two more missing after their boat was electrocuted by power lines under the water. One man died while looking for his sister's cat. I couldn't even help my son. I couldn't resuscitate him. He was in electrified water. President Trump is returning to Texas tomorrow. Harvey's cost so far, by most estimates, over $100 billion. And the city of Buffalo is now joining the effort to help those impacted by Harvey. Leaders are asking people to donate basic household items and school supplies. The city is teaming up with the Salvation Army and True Bethel Baptist Church to collect the donated goods. There will be drop-off points around the city beginning Tuesday. All around the country, volunteers are still rushing down to the Gulf Coast to help out there. Another group from western New York flew down to Texas this morning. There are now more than 200 Red Cross and partner shelters up and running in the disaster zone, and they're taking care of more than 30,000 people right now. The Red Cross Western New York Regional Director, Jay Bonafidi, says that he's never seen an operation of this scale during his time with the organization. We've had our single family house fires and uh, or snowstorms, and even that single family house fire is a traumatic loss for the family. It's, uh, for that family, it's every bit as tragic as what's happening on the wider scale here in Texas. So this is what we do. We try to provide a little hope, a little um, comfort in some of these most trying and difficult situations. As of tonight, more than half of the Red Cross emergency response fleet has now been deployed to the Gulf Coast from all over the country. 
A Western New York native whose dog went missing during rescue operations in Texas says he is not giving up hope. Frank the Bulldog went overboard while he and David Scherf were helping people in the floodwaters this week in Houston. Scherf says that Frank's life jacket now has been found. He says that's a good sign because that means they're at least in the right place. Drones are also now being used to try and find the dog. And as the Gulf deals with the devastation of Harvey, Hurricane Irma could be the next weather disaster. Irma gaining strength today, far out still in the Atlantic, threatening the Caribbean and possibly the U.S. by next week. 7 First Alert Chief Meteorologist Darren Mikowski is tracking that storm for us right now. Yeah, it looks like another major hurricane. Irma should end up as a Category 4 or possibly Category 5 storm before all is said and done. For now, it's a major hurricane at Category 3 with winds of 120 miles per hour, moving to the west at around 13 miles per hour. As the time we head into uh, Sunday, you can see that storm basically uh, still at uh, 120 miles per hour. And then we go out toward Wednesday and check it out. A category four storm with winds of 130 miles per hour just the east of Puerto Rico. And a lot of the long range models are showing this pushing over toward the US mainland and really anywhere from South Florida to New England. You need to prep for Irma as it could possibly move on shore really anywhere along the East Coast. So this is something we'll continue to watch as it continues to strengthen. Back to you. Thanks, Aaron. Governor Cuomo calling for a major disaster declaration now for all of the New York counties impacted by severe storms this summer. Once that declaration is granted, then federal money would be available to the state and local governments. That money would go towards debris removal and structure repairs following recent flash flooding and tornadoes as well. We are learning new information about the arraignment of a Buffalo police officer accused of assaulting a suspect. Officer Joseph Hassett pleaded not guilty to charges of assault, official misconduct, and filing a false instrument Tuesday morning. That's the same day prosecutors announced his arrest and said he would be arraigned next Tuesday. We are told his lawyer asked to have the court date pushed up. At One Bills Drive, it is all business now after the Bills wrapped up the preseason with a win last night over Detroit. So now it is up to the team's new head coach and general manager to build a winning team. Yeah, the regular season kicks off in just nine days. And already the camper lot at New Era Field is sold out for the first four home games. Sports director Joe Piscalia joins us now. Joe, a lot of excitement from the fans already. Yeah, there certainly is, Keith and Ashley. And even the Bills have opened up big favorites in Las Vegas in their week one matchup against the New York Jets. But before any of that takes place, first they have the business of getting their roster down to league requirements. They need to make a total of 30 roster moves by 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So for Bills GM Brandon Bean and head coach Sean McDermott, it makes for a lot of tough decisions for players they might have wanted to keep. The team already making some moves unofficially. Anyway, according to the Houston Chronicle, the Bills have released cornerback Bradley Silve, who is in a battle for one of the last spots on the team. The team also parted ways with wide receiver Des Lewis and offensive lineman Greg Pike. Meanwhile, ESPN reports offensive lineman Cameron Jefferson has been let go, while injured safety Shamil Gary has reached a settlement with the team and has been released from the roster. Now, this is just the first wave of cuts. The Bills will need to have their roster down to 53 by 4 o'clock tomorrow, and then on Sunday they can start to claim players on waivers that were released by other teams around the league. All in all, a flurry of activity is on the horizon this weekend, and we'll keep you up to speed right here and on WKBW.com. Joe Biscalia, 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Joe. Still to come on 7 Eyewitness News at 6. Traveling this holiday weekend? Watch out for this sign. Deputies might be collecting and reviewing your speed. If there's one thing that's predictable about our children, it's that, that they are unpredictable. Also, it's back to school season once again, and the sheriff is urging drivers to stay alert out there. You can see her body, pretty much her muscles just twitching. And fighting fleas. Is too much product actually harmful for your pet? The warning tonight from vets. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News at 6.
watching 7 Eyewitness News with Keith Radford and Ashley Rowe, 7 First Alert Meteorologist Aaron Minkowski, and Sports Director Joe Viscalia. He is the man everyone here in Western New York knows as Elvis. And tonight, Terry Buckwald is asking for your prayers for his little boy. According to his Facebook page, Terry's two-year-old son had to have surgery to remove a mass from his kidney. That mass was found by their pediatrician during a routine checkup. It was removed along with some lymph nodes. Our thoughts go out to Terry's son and the entire family tonight for a speedy recovery. Such a kind family. Yes. Next tonight, a warning for pet owners. Be careful when using flea protection products. Now, the Erie County SPCA says it has seen a number of cats recently who have been harmed because their owners use either the wrong product or the right product and too much of it. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Brittany Muller tells us what to watch out for. Thelma's actually nice and pink, which is a good indicator of what we need. Um, and we like to, we look at the dentition, we see if there's any dental tartar or any dental abnormalities or teeth that may need some medical attention. Um, we... All right, hopefully we can uh, get that queued up for you and show you that story in a moment. Meantime, if you are traveling this weekend, watch out for a new state-of-the-art speed enforcement sign in Erie County. The Sheriff's Department is using this sign now to determine trouble spots here in western New York. This sign will detect a vehicle's speed, show it to the driver as you go by. It also collects the speed of every vehicle that goes by that it passes and it keeps it in a computer, that information. The Sheriff's Department can then review the data, data rather, at a later time and then determine the best times for locations for patrols. Next week, the roads will be a little more crowded with students headed back to school. Today, the AAA kicked off its campaign to keep children safe on the roads. Over the past decade, more than a quarter of all deadly accidents involving a child happened in the hours after school. The AAA and the Erie County Sheriff are urging drivers to stay off their phones and slow down near schools and in neighborhoods. We have seen fatal accidents when these children have run out of the road. Um, families that are forever ruined, drivers that they carry that burden with them forever. What we want is for people to cooperate with the law, see the bus, know that that's warning them of an impending danger, particularly to the children, and help keep our communities safe. According to the AAA, more than a third of drivers roll through stop signs in school zones or neighborhoods. Students at South Buffalo Charter School received a special welcome back gift today. The New Era Cap Company donated more than a thousand custom hats for each student and staff member at the school. Each of these hats has a special SBCS logo on it. What we wanted to do is be able to give the students something to feel proud about, uh, to have uh, to wear out uh, when they're outside of school grounds, uh, to let people know that they attend South Buffalo Charter. All 1,100 of those hats were made right here in Western New York. Returning to our story about pet safety and making sure that you don't overdo it when it comes to flea protection products. Here's 7 Eyewitness News reporter Brittany Muller. Still see her. She's still tremoring a little bit. Uh, nothing like she was before. This is Thelma. She was dropped off at the SPCA serving Erie County with flea medication toxicity, meaning she was either treated for fleas with too much product or treated with product meant for dogs. So you can see her body, pretty much her muscles just twitching. Luckily for Thelma, veterinarians treated her before the toxicity had progressed, but the SPCA says it has seen up to 10 cats recently with the same problem. It's been a pretty bad flea and tick season, so potentially owners could just be getting uh, upset or kind of fed up with the fact that they can't get rid of the fleas. Something the SPCA says it normally doesn't see this late in the summer. People tend to apply 
a medication that's not meant for cats. Or pet owners apply too much. More is not better. That's what leads to the toxicity is because it's too much of the medication for the animal's body to handle. The SPCA says the first thing you'll notice with flea medication toxicity is agitation and tremoring from head to toe, meaning it's time to get help for your pet. We did have a small kitten that had a product applied and unfortunately the cat did not make it. But if pet owners act in time, veterinarians can bathe the cats and give them IV fluids and medications to help them recover. Thelma here was also in pretty rough shape. We weren't sure that she was going to make it, but fortunately she was able to pull through and she found a home. In West Seneca, Brittany Muller, 7 Eyewitness News.